Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield with an old checker that has become the yellow submarine. If you live in or around Springfield, there's a chance that you've seen this uh, yellow submarine, bubbles and all going down the street. And as you might guess, this would only be owned by a true Beatles lover. And you're about to meet him. Okay, Bob, I see a sign that says, this way to mini museum of authentic Beatles artifacts. I wouldn't call this a mini museum, <laughs> Rob Bartell. I would, Bartell, I wouldn't call it a mini museum. It looks like we're on the Abbey Road. Yes, <laughs> I painted that for the appearance so when people come over as my guest, they could actually not have to go to London, but they could do the Abbey Road Walk. <laughs> and I, it was thoroughly enjoyed by everybody who came. It was, it was just marvelous. People loved it. Now listen, we're going to get into your love of the Beatles, oh. why you love them so much. Sure. A major endeavor that you undertook right. in the 90s. Um, but first, we want to show some of this collection oh, because okay. it's such a hoot. You've got three rooms here full of stuff. Yeah. You and your wife actually met because you both love the Beatles, yes, right? exactly. Tell was, me that It story. was real love. Um, I was searching for a girl to equal my love for the Beatles on the guy's side, but I needed the girl on the girl side. <laughs> and here comes Janice, and she's writing to me from New York. And I thought, New York, this is great. This girl, I'd say, did you meet the Beatles? <laughs> yes, I met them all on the streets. We'd chase them around, and we'd hide at, they would hide from us, but I was at their press conferences where we snuck underneath the table when the four Beatles were doing a press yeah. conference, and one of their managers, road handlers, said, who's at Arnito's table? You girls get out from there. And so the girls, which was Janice and her girlfriend, mm -hmm. they like, okay. But they were just like there, just trying to just to touch them. Snapping and, pictures all yeah. the time, right? Oh, snapping pictures, relentless. Yeah. And pa Paul's wife, Linda, would say, girls, please, <laughs> just let us be. We're just out for the night. And I know you love Paul, and he loves all you girls. And then um, she, she would, Janice would say, does he, you guys need a taxi cab? I'll, I'll hail a taxi cab. And so she went out on the street, stop, 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 it's Paul McCartney, he needs to get in a cab. <laughs> and so she said it was crazy because the girls would just love oh, I'm Paul. Sure was, now how did you meet your wife though? Well, this was the intriguing part. Um, I would say, when are you gonna come to Springfield or when am I coming to New York? Mm -hmm. It was either one way or the other. And I've never been to New York, but I was fascinated by that. So I got on a plane. She met me <laughs> at LaGuardia. And I'm thinking, I don't know this girl. What if she doesn't show up? I don't know anybody in New York. Oh my God, maybe this is a big risk. No, 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 it's, it's all positive, it's all good. She loves the Beatles, we talked on the phone. She sends me all these Beatle things. So off in the distance, I see this girl walking towards me with this bouquet of flowers. She's getting closer and closer. Mm -hmm. and I said, Janice? Robert? Oh, she said, the limousine is waiting for us out in front. We had a hard time parking it. So come on, the limousine is waiting for us. We're going to tour <laughs> Broadway. We're going to go all over. The, I'm going to show you where all the Beatle things are at. Yeah. <laughs> Strawberry Fields. I go, oh, Janice, you brought me to heaven with you. The Beatles, you know, true, true love. And so I'm in, the, I'm in the back in this limousine, and here's this girl giving me a bouquet of flowers. And I'm going, she's my true love. Th this is it. I found my equal in the mm -hmm. world who was just as, well, he used the word beetle maniac as well as I was. Uh, well, it's not the word I like. How many use. years ago was this? 1991. 1991, and you're still together, yeah. and you still love this. You still love all this. We're coming up to our 25th anniversary yeah, this yeah. year. So it's. It's, it's our thing, you know, we come down yeah. here, you know, some guys have race cars in their garage yeah. and they have, you know, their yeah, man caves man or whatever, caves. yeah. Well, we sit over there and we watch Beatle movies. Let's go over here and okay. because this explains a little bit about what you were talking about, about her as, <laughs> I love these pictures. These are pictures that your wife took on yes. the streets of New York. Yes. There's Paul with his <laughs> wife and his baby. <laughs> Um, and she's just waiting for him to come out of the hotel or out of the nightclub or whatever so she can snap these pictures. It's yes. amazing. Yes. Here's another one of them just walking down the street in New York. No, no, that's EMI. That's in London. Oh, that's, that's in London. Yes. Okay. 
So she didn't one. take this no, one? No, no, she didn't take oh, okay. those. Okay, all but right. I think there's a flip side maybe to that. Well, not really. No, but those are still pretty good. Those, those are, are great photos. Yeah. But it shows the immense love she had for Paul oh, McCartney. I know, and, and this too, because what oh I've asked you gosh. to do is, is, t is get one of her scrapbooks. And, of course, this is a lot of girls <sighs> did this. This was a but girl thing. Guys just, never did this. But it just goes to show how every clip she could find, she must have spent hours and days and weeks searching out all this stuff and then categorizing it and putting it into the... Archiving it as delicate, as beautiful, she loved them. <laughs> she wanted to have these memories as she got older. Oh, and, and it's me. on, look at this precious paper, this school paper that she's got it on. And there's cartoons, and it's fantastic. And it's and, it's, you, and you sit here and you watch your Beatles movie. Yeah, we watch our Beatles movie. <laughs> <laughs> on that monitor right over well, there. Well, we had a bigger one, but the bottom one, it was one of those rear projectors. Yeah. And it finally went coink. So I, I, I assume you have all the Beatles movies. Oh. But there are movies about the Beatles, too, that you probably watch as well. Oh, my gosh. We have, we have <laughs> Paul's Vacation in Africa. We have the Magical Mystery Tour. We have... Oh, set, you've got the reels. Well, these oh are converted goodness. into DVDs. Oh. Or see, I'm sorry. Um, well, I'll show you. They're, um, they're VHS. And these are rare. These are from the original pr uh, pressing, if I can get my fingers undone. <coughs> they're tight. Oh, you need a dime, don't you? You need a coin. I Here, don't think I can get it, Mark. Let me give you a coin. I just, it's tight. Let me just see. Uh, maybe, a, just, maybe a dime will do it, huh? A dime's pretty good. <coughs> Try a dime. Try it. You know, it's, it's not going to work. Oh, no, oh, that's okay. We but, can live without it. We, but we got the idea. Inside is the vacation. This is behind the scenes of making it help mm -hmm. that the Beatles took. And they put it out to their fans, their loyal fans. Mm -hmm. Same way with this. Um, Paul in Africa. We may be able to slide this Mystery one Mystery trip. Now, this is... This is a outtakes from... Uh, these are these were taken outtakes from the Beatles themselves on their little 8mm cameras. Mm -hmm. They never used the high-tech stuff. Okay, there you go. Oh, I see. So you've got it on VHS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we can watch that. And But these, these are the things that they did on their own. And so we would watch these beautiful mm -hmm. memories mm -hmm. and fall back in love with the whole music thing of the Beatles. Back to your wife again. Sure. This wall, this whole oh. wall, if we can move, let's move this way so okay. we get a good look at it. Okay. Is all the stuff that she actually brought all this to your, yes. to your life when you all yes. got married. This is she? all my wife. Because she has, her collection's almost as massive as yours is. We, we had a merger. As, as well as we had a wedding, we had a merger. <laughs> 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 and you brought this to the wedding, and I brought this to the wedding. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, oh my God. And now it's ours. It's yes. our museum. It's like, we, I found the Beatle girl of my life. <laughs> and she lived a thousand, twelve hundred miles away, but it didn't matter. It was distance, no big deal. And she, she took me around New York. She showed me everything everywhere. And I said, oh, my God, we got to get married. Oh, it's hilarious. So we got married on John Lennon's birthday. Did you night. really? Yes. And, and what year was that? Uh, 19, well, it was 25 years ago, yeah. back from 2018, okay. 1992. Okay, on John Lennon's birthday. And then Christy, the daughter, was born on John Lennon's birthday. Is that right? Yeah. And you have a, you have a daughter together? Uh, yeah. Okay. Christy. Didn't, didn't know that. Christy Lynn. Mm -hmm. um, she goes, Dad. <laughs> I said, Christy, when Pops dies, what, what, what are you going to do with all this? eBay. <laughs> I said, oh, come on. Well, she doesn't, she uh, doesn't share your enthusiasm. Huh? Well, she's from a different... But from, she was born on John Lennon's birthday? Yeah. That's amazing. She, she knows why I love the Beatles, yeah, but yeah. it's like a different generation. Yeah. Backstreet Boys? Yeah. yeah. Beatles? Uh, yeah. I know. I know. It's kind of like, you know... I. I never re really was a Sinatra fan because I wasn't, I didn't, he, he, you know, he was yeah. popular, oh, but sure, he wasn't, sure. a, he wasn't, gr you know, to me, it was the Beatles, you oh, know, it was God. the Beatles. So I kind of get it. She I said, Dad, I think you burned me out on the Beatles, <laughs> but I'll probably keep some of it. <laughs> we, uh, here's, um, they put our name on there, Bob and Janice, this is the EMI headquarters, and they put Bob and Janice Bartell uh, in remembrance. You're kidding. No. Well, how did they even know about you? Well, her friend, our friends went there, uh -huh. and they said, we're going to do this for Bob and Janice. <laughs> so they put our names on the, on the wall there. Um, and then we, you know, all these historic things. Like, this is another proclamation. Of course, we'll get into that a little bit later. 
but this is this is so beautiful. The state of Illinois recognizes it, and it's it's like that is as big as it gets. We're gonna we're gonna get to that story later and in the program. Here's Bob and Janice uh, on, okay. on the wall yeah, again. Okay. And it's it goes on and on our yeah. story. It's all about the. Let's log. go to the cavern. Okay. All right. Let's take Abbey Road back to the cavern. Here. Okay. Here we go. Um, and this is when the Beatles were very young. Yes. They kind of started out of a place called the cavern. At least that's mo most of us know as the cavern is kind of their starting place. And that was in right. Liverpool, right? Right. Exactly. And this part of your uh, uh, museum here is kind of dedicated to that period of time. Right. But this picture down here with the three youngsters is just priceless because mm -hmm. this is before their drummer. And right. they got the Elvis Presley look going on here. They, they were fans, huge fans of Elvis. They adored him. And that was a catalyst to move them along, musically speaking. Boy, if we could be just as big as Elvis, boy, we got the world. Oh, no and, kidding. And here they're at George's mom's house, and um, they're just rehearsing, playing mm -hmm. some little guitars. Mm -hmm. uh, not the guitars that they would use later on, obviously, with the Beatles. Now, but we're looking at the bass guitar right mm -hmm. now. Right. And w how is this significant? Well, that would be the, the Hoffner bass style guitar, the violin uh, bass. Um, this would be the second series of, of Hoffner bass is, guitars. Is that Paul's? Is that Paul's yeah, that was Paul. Okay. Yeah, right. he played it. He played one, not that guitar, but he played one like it. Very similar, okay. yes. Okay. Yes. And the, what about the boots? The boots are from that period of time. Mm -hmm. I bought them from a collector uh, in downtown Springfield who was going out of business, Samuel's um, clothing mm -hmm. store. Had them up in his attic. He, did, he didn't tell you the Beatles actually wore them. No, though. no. Oh my God. <laughs> <With> Priceless <laughs> then. That yeah. just went up to Celebi's price. You know? I remember these in high school. I remember guys wearing them. Yeah. My parents never bought me these, but I remember guys wearing them. And I always thought, oh, how cool is that? Aren't they just about the I fabulous was thing? To. Oh, they are fab. <laughs> they are fab. And, uh, and these cutouts that you got of the guys, it's just, just terrific. One other photo is right down in central here, right down in front. Okay. And here we're talking about the Cavern Club. And this is this is really good. And this is signed by Pete, Pete Best, Best, right? Right. Now, who is Pete Best? He was their drummer, the original drummer of the Beatles. Brian didn't quite get along with his drumming style. Brian Epstein? Brian Epstein. Uh -huh. And then the other fellow said he's got to go. In comes Ringo. He yeah. was just going to be a temporary replacement. But then the girls, there was a fight between Pete Best's girls there in the cavern and Ringo yeah, yeah. and his girlfriends that screamed. So they had a screaming contest at the cavern. <laughs> we want Pete. And the girls would go, we want Ringo. And it was a battle between the girls to help the Beatles decide who's the biggest drummer we're going to need. And the girls for Ringo won. They drowned out the Pete Best girls. But I've met Pete probably two or three times. They're in Benton, particularly. Um, in Benton, Illinois. Yeah, he that, came. That's the story we're going to tell about the house down there. Oh. But anyway, back to Pete. Yeah, but but Pete, Pete was a terrific drummer. But if you notice, whoops, Pete didn't comb his hair like the other three. And that got him in He's trouble. He's got a James Dean look going yes. on there. So and that, that, yeah. that didn't fall in line with the other three yeah. with their mop Plus top Plus the girls look. loved Ringo. Yeah, yeah and, and he... And he wasn't cheeky like the other three. Mm -hmm. He was sort of a quiet kind of guy yeah. where John Paul and George were just, wow, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And Pete just didn't work out, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, he got his Dear John letter from Brian yeah, Epstein in his shame. office. That's but, you know, he still had made a hell of a lot of royalties off the anthology, like a million dollar check yeah. that he got because he was in part of the early uh, uh, astrology. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the anthology. Yeah. And, um, so there, there was all these things that Pete did, but he moved on. Um, he has his own museum in Liverpool, um, and so he's doing yeah. quite well. Show me the rest of it. Oh, Let's okay. go in here. Well, Rob, it, it's a little different in this section of the museum, isn't it? It's, it's a bright colored part of the museum. I wanted the distinction between the black and white world as what we knew the Beatles were prior to them even arriving yeah. to when they appeared on the Ed Sullivan Theater stage yeah. and 80 million teenagers went gaga goo goo over these guys okay. boys girls everybody except the parents yeah. and we said this is it this is the new direction we lost John F Kennedy 
we thought, oh, we're all sad. Yeah, things were gloom, yeah. Pretty gloom. Yeah. And then these guys came along with, I want to hold your hand, please please me. She loves it you. It was so happy. It was oh, really happy music. It was the most beautiful Even thing. Ed Sullivan smiled. And yes. He was such a sourpuss. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> he, he brought him out to the world, yeah. introduced these yeah. four lads from Liverpool in this tremendous feeling of CBS bringing in the biggest entertainers that the world would yeah. ever know yeah. and still knows. Yeah. And um, so I said, this room's going to be different. This room is dedicated to the Ed Sullivan Theater, CBS, and the idea that he brought enlightenment to us from the Dark Ages. You even match the color of the stage here. These are all authentic colors. I went and got a, the color copy of his theater mm -hmm. stage, and this would be the stage as it was, That's and these would remarkable. be the backdrops. No kidding. And I wanted it to be as representative as I closely mm -hmm. could to show people when they come here through the museum that I'm dedicated to preserving Beatle history as a historian, as a curator, as a Beatle documentary maker, storyteller. So I, I didn't want to miss out in leaving any of the important little things. Even the color of the stage was important mm -hmm. because I'm a museum curator and I want people to know what I know is to be what they need to know. Yeah, yeah because they didn't know this, and I'm enlightening them. Yeah. But it, it, the story is so precious, and 80 million screaming fans still to this day, but worldwide now, worldwide, just huge followers of these guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go into the history now a little bit. Okay. Because you were involved, Beatle history in Illinois is not something that everybody thinks about, but. Back when George was very young, before mm -hmm. he was a Beatle? No, he was a Beatle. He was a Beatle. He, he, was... he visited his sister who lived in so Southern Illinois, right. in Benton, Illinois. Right. Now, the house where he stayed one right. summer right. was being torn down. Oh, yes. And when you <laughs> found out about this, oh, my gosh. you went down to Benton, did a little homework, found the house. Right. And you physically put yourself between the backhoe yes. and the house in order to keep it from civil being torn down, didn't you? I said civil disobedience is going to be the thing that I'm going to have to do. Yeah. I did not know any state senators, representatives, congressmen, judges. It was all up to me, heaped on my shoulders until the posse came, which was Louise, the governor. Now Louise is Louise Harrison. Louise Harrison, yeah. um, who all came to my aid, that they all said, wait a minute, this is one of the most historic landmarks in the whole entire state, but in Franklin County, the most historic yep. piece yep. of property. And we have to preserve that for now and for future generations, and we're not going to let this backhoe tear it down. Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to let you tear it down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay down in front of this stupid thing. Mm -hmm. They may arrest me, but I'm going to draw attention to what I needed to do. Here's a picture of Louise. We talked about Louise Harrison and, of course, George. And on the flip side, I'm going to turn this around because this one's really precious. Oh my God. This is on Main Street in Benton, Illinois, yes. where George is holding, I guess that's a niece? That's, uh, that's uh, Louise's, Louise's daughter, daughter. Right, and Louise, and another brother, Peter, Peter, uh, who were visiting Benton that same summer. Yeah. Ringo and, was uh, supposed to come, but he backed out. <laughs> well, he was probably busy with some girl. He was in, <laughs> he was in Paris with Paul. Is that right? Yes. So, so she's written this book. Oh yeah. You become friends with Louise yes. because you've met her in this process right. and she's been traveling around. She stayed here. But she did come back from Florida where she was living at the time right. when you were making an Saratoga. attempt to save the house. Yes. And and she helped you. Oh. You had other help too. You had politicians on oh. your side and without the politicians oh. it would have never happened. Never happened. No state official. If I had not them on my side, it would have been a ten car parking lot. Yeah. yeah. What is the house now? It is now no longer the hard day's night bed and breakfast. It's just a frat house. Mm -hmm. The owners have turned it over to a college there in Southern Illinois, unfortunately. But, but fortunately, it's still there. Historically, it's yeah. still there. It's not torn down. Is it plaqued? Is, it, is there a plaque on it that no, says a historic site of any kind? No, but the state of Illinois, the historians came and did a dedication on the town square and there's a state historic marker there Good. that we Good. all came and spoke at. And, yeah. um, but you see, when the state gets behind something, you've got a winning ordeal. Yeah. 
if you don't have the state behind you and yeah. all the powers to be, it'd been me against all of that. I would have never won. Yeah. So I have to be thankful for all the people that joined in to help me. Uh, I, I wasn't the sole person. I was the guy who discovered it, like Janice said. I was the Christopher Columbus of yeah. discoveries for Illinois. I want to show you something else while we're here because you created a documentary about the process, right? right? About the process and what was important about the house, why it was important. Right. Um, and this is George's two and a half weeks one summer in Benton, Illinois. Right. And then hold this Oscar for me so we can get a look at that. Tell me about this award. This is a 2018 award for uh, my documentary for the Beetle and Benton that uh, I was awarded and I was so honored. I was nominated. I w then was given the, the, the award. And I, I took that as being, oh my gosh, if there's things to do about the Beatles and you get recognized <laughs> by people who are in the know of the work you do, yeah. like Emmys like you have, Oscars like I now have, you know you've done all the right things. You put your mark in place and people know that you do very good work. Yeah. And that put uh, to me the, the end cap on yeah. whatever I was to do with the Beatles. Now, another end cap though was when this video, this documentary that you made, mm -hmm. uh, became eligible and was accepted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh my gosh, yes. I was so honored. My wife and I drove there in the checker, the yellow submarine car. Oh, the yellow submarine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us a private tour. They took us around, showed us some Beatles stuff that they were working on. And they said, you are now a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Lifetime because we want every little thing about the Beatles in this archives at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We are going to be the archival people of anything Beatles. This is a story we did not know. You brought it to our attention. It's going to be here forever and forever, and we appreciate your work, Robert, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Janice. Yeah. Now, you, you've worked on other documentaries as well. In fact, you're working on a third one having to do with the same house, aren't you? Yes. Uh, I have, uh, is it called B-roll? You know what they are. Yeah, you had, had a lot of footage left over. A lot of stuff. Yeah. But it's all good B-roll, but I just didn't, the last documentary was 240 minutes, two DVDs, and I could still do with B-roll and outtakes and good stuff, I could add another 240 minutes yeah. of double DVD, which they're clamoring for. Yeah. So I'm going to get that done. Uh, and that will complete the whole complete story of as I recorded it, yeah. you know, and I interviewed the people. Um, and I'm, I'm preserving Illinois history like you are right now, yeah. Mark. You're preserving, you're preserving what I'm, I've done. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go out to your public, mm -hmm. your viewers, who all love the Beatles. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's one person who can't say, I don't like the I Beatles. I don't know. There's Beach Boy fans oh, out know, there. Oh, my gosh. You know, they're, oh, boy. But um, the Beatles are king. And we were just looking at some of your other work here, too. Imagine yesterday a play by Bar uh, Rob Bartell. Um, and you, you've done some other work and, and been recognized All for those it. years ago was my big one at the Hoagland. Um, that's, this, that's this big, big right. one here, huh? Yes. Okay. And a chief judge from Sangamon County ordered two rows, front row seats, and he, we filled two, two venues there. Plus, we did a dinner as well in between. Mm -hmm. And I had a Beatles tribute band play in between too. So everything's Beatles with me. I mean, it's it's not the <laughs> Yellow Submarine. It's this or it's that. The state has honored in proclamations, um, the House of Representatives. Everybody said, "Thank you, Robert." Thank you for what you did. It's preserved. Um, don't go away yet because yeah. you, you know we still have work to yeah. do. But we would have never known this, Robert. Uh, you woke us up. I'm, I'm going to say thank you, Robert, too, thank for you, sharing Mark. your museum with us. Thank you. We're out of time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. And you know you've seen the yellow submarine in the driveway, and yet you've seen much of the museum. And we just hope that you've enjoyed this magical mystery tour. With another Illinois story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching.
Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.